Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. Today we're going to be making lobster cakes. Let's start off with our wet ingredients and that's usually how you do these types of things and variations of this could be a crab cake or a fish cake even for that matter. We want to get all of our wet ingredients into one bowl. I have mayonnaise, two whole eggs, I have one lime, and I'm just going to mix these things together. I'm going to break those yolks up. And I'm just going to stir and combine everything. It's going to get fairly uh, soupy almost. It looks like there's almost too much liquid in here. And once it's evenly combined, we're going to start to add some uh, dry ingredients. Our next ingredient we're going to add is our lobster. Um, dice your lobster up so that it's, um, you can buy lobster tails, which is fine. You can buy those frozen. Just make sure you strain off the liquid. And then dice it up into small enough pieces. Um, I would say about a half inch by half inch is a fine size. The lobster will immediately start to draw in some of that liquid. Um, I should also say make sure it's completely thawed. You don't want any liquid. You don't want any frozen lobster in here. Um, but that lobster will start to absorb some of that stuff. When the lobster's in there, you can add your seasonings. My seasonings are going to be some dried herbs, smoked paprika, and garlic powder. I have one teaspoon of each. And as you, you you'll notice that as you're adding drier ingredients, uh, it's really going to start to absorb and take away some of that liquid. I have lime zest, so one, that lime that we use the juice from, we're going to add the zest to it half a red onion, diced. Keep stirring it up. One jalapeno diced. And I really like the, the, the way that pepper is going to play off of the lobster as well as that lime juice. It's going to give you a little bit of a kick there. Um, one green pepper, one green bell pepper diced up. Um, and then before I add my uh, panko, which is uh, Japanese breadcrumbs, I'm going to want to add one teaspoon of black pepper and two teaspoons of salt. Stir all that up. You'll notice your mixture is starting to come together. You barely see any liquid in there. And this is why I add my uh, breadcrumbs or my panko at the very end. This will tell me how much I need to add depending on how it absorbs everything together. I'm going to start with one cup of panko. And I do want to reserve some of that panko for the crust or the breading of the lobster cakes. But depending on you know what we put in here, we may have to add more of the panko to our breading mixture. And you can use regular breadcrumbs if you make your own breadcrumbs too at home. That's fine. Any any really uh, breadcrumb will, will work. Just remember that save or reserve a little bit for that breading because you want some of that texture. Now at this point. You don't see a lot of liquid pouring off of the lobster cakes, but I do want to do a real quick test with this. I'm going to grab a uh, ice cream scoop, and I want to make sure this is going to hold up. So I'll just give it the old, will that hold together? And the answer is yes. So we're ready for our next step. So our next step is to start to shape these, and then to drop them into our breadcrumbs, and then to start uh, pan searing them. If you don't want to pan sear them or you're afraid about the smoke that happens on your uh, from your stove or from cooking with all that, you can also bake them in the oven. It's just going to take a little bit longer. And what I would recommend is baking them at 400 degrees on, on a bake mode or a roast mode. And it's going to probably take you about 10 to 12 minutes to bake them. But in the pan, it's much faster and a lot easier. Our next uh, step is we want to get that oil first, uh, hot first before we add those cakes to the pan. So we'll heat up our pan 
like we do for any sort of saute. Wait for that oil to actually start to, or wait for that pan to heat up before we add the oil. I'm going to show you how to cook up two of these lobster cakes. And I like lobster cakes because you can use them for, you know, not only a main entree if you want, but you can also use them for uh, an appetizer. So I'm going to serve these up kind of small size. I use my scoop initially, and then once I can form it with my hand, I will drop it into the breadcrumbs. And I'm not so worried about the sides of the uh, lobster cakes as I am mostly the top and the bottom of coating it with the breadcrumbs. Because these are lobster cakes, they're not bread cakes. And we don't want them to be too bready, or have too much breading on it, I should say. There you go. Drop that one in there. Let's add our oil. You just want a nice light coat of that oil on the bottom of the pan. You don't need a lot. Give it a few seconds to heat up, and then we'll be ready to pan sear our lobster cakes. Our oil is nice and hot. You can tell again that oil is going to move around the pan nice and freely. We're going to grab our lobster cakes. I'm going to flip them over so I can get both sides coated with the breadcrumbs. And I'm hoping you can hear that little sizzle there in the pan. That's what we really want to be able to hear. Drop that one in as well. And what you're going to look for now, and this is important, you can go by uh, sight and also sound. You want to continue to hear that sizzle. It means that oil's hot enough and the breadcrumbs are going to cook. Uh, but you also want to watch the breadcrumbs. They will start to go from the white color that the panko is, and they'll start to lightly brown, almost like they're being toasted in the pan. That's what you want. You'll start to smell as well, but listen and watch what's happening uh, to your cakes from this moment on. Uh, it should be about three to four minutes per side at most on a medium heat. You don't have to go too high because you don't want to burn the uh, breadcrumbs. You just want to make sure you cook everything through. Another word of advice, remember your lobster's cooked. The only thing you're really worried about here is getting those eggs done. If for some reason your cakes start to fall apart on you, that's telling you that your lobster cakes, you've cooked them too far. You don't want the eggs to, to cook and almost scramble inside and they'll just start to break apart. You want to be, you want to be pretty attentive to what's going on. If you have to help them out a little bit by pushing that oil back across them a little bit, feel free and do that as well. So we'll give them three minutes, we'll flip them, we'll come back and finish them up. After three minutes, I flipped one of them. You can see how beautiful golden brown that is. They smell wonderful. We'll flip the next one. Again, gorgeous color on them. They have a great crust. While those are cooking, we can make a real quick uh, spice mayonnaise so we can drizzle, these on, drizzle that on top of these uh, lobster cakes when they're done. I'm going to serve these on a bed of uh, arugula and fennel salad with a little bit of spinach tossed in there. But on top for a, for a sauce, I'm going to make uh, take a little hot sauce we make our own hot sauce in the cave, and I think we'll probably do a recipe of that in the future. But a good or a favorite hot sauce that you like, you can easily do. Mix that in with uh, some, so I have about one teaspoon or, of hot sauce to three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Gives you a nice drizzle and a little bit of a kick to that. Hit it with a little salt, just a pinch of pepper too. Whisk that up. Our cakes are basically done, so plating up is very simple after this point. We're going to start with our salad. Again, this is arugula, shaved fennel, as well as some spinach. We can move our lobster cakes right on top. And then I just like to coat them all with it, make sure you get some of that in with your salad down below. There you go. A very elegant but simple recipe you can do for a special holiday or even just when you're kicking around on the weekends. Lobster cakes. 
uh, done from cooking from the cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak. Thank you very much, and I'll see you real soon.